If you're watching this, you probably believe that I exist. But if, for some reason, you didn't want to believe that I exist, you could explain away all evidence of my existence. Perhaps I'm a hologram or a CGI. Perhaps you're dreaming. Perhaps powerful mind-manipulating aliens are tricking you into thinking that I exist. Human beings are amazingly adept at explaining away evidence for things they don't want to believe in. That's why we have Holocaust deniers, moon landing conspiracy theorists, flat earthers, and of course, atheists. If you fall into one of those camps, please feel free to cry me a river in the comments section. Religion is an emotionally charged topic for many people, and when it comes to religion, no one is as emotional as the people who are often described as the new atheists. Since emotion can cloud our judgment, it's become increasingly common to find these atheistic lumps of outrage trolling social media platforms claiming that Jesus never existed. Now, it's one thing to be skeptical of Jesus' virgin birth or his resurrection from the dead, but to be skeptical of his existence? To think that Christianity took off in the first century without an actual person named Jesus to set things in motion? To be so angry at Jesus because your parents made you go to church when you were a kid that you become a reality-denying hyper-skeptic who spends all his time posting, I just don't find the evidence convincing on Facebook? A Jesus mither might just as reasonably throw himself on the floor of the checkout aisle at Walmart because his mommy wouldn't buy him a pack of Skittles. But don't take my word for it. I asked Dr. Mike Lacona, Dr. Gary Habermas, and Dr. William Lane Craig what they think about Jesus mythers. Every once in a while, some people will propose that Jesus never existed. It lasts for a little while and then it goes away. That Jesus did exist is very well attested in the historical literature. It is mentioned by a number of non-Christian sources. For example, Jesus is mentioned by Josephus. Uh, Tacitus mentions Jesus. Lucian of Samosata mentions him. Marabar Serapian mentions Jesus. The Talmud mentions him. Uh, Josephus mentions the martyrdom of James, the brother of Jesus, who was called the Christ. Again, it's very difficult to have someone who's a brother of someone who did not exist. In addition, we have a number of Christian sources who mention Jesus. We have multiple independent sources with the Gospels. You have Paul, uh, the letters of Paul. You have uh, the book of Hebrews. You have other New Testament literature. These are multiple independent sources. And although they're a Christian, you just can't discount them because they're Christian. Well, definitely, I think Jesus existed. But if I were going to give just a kind of a general kind of response, uh, I'd say uh, big picture, little picture. Big picture, from uh, about 1990 with the uh, work of Richard Burridge, on the Gospels and the predominant view in New Testament studies today being that the, that the uh, Gospels are in the genre of Greco-Roman bias or biography. That doesn't mean there can't be anything in there that, you know, it doesn't mean the Greeks and Romans don't tell funny little tales sometimes, but it makes the genre is not a fantasy genre, it's a potentially historical genre. So big picture is, with the Gospels, we've got the right data. Specific picture you're going to have to zero in on the, on the small cases, the so-called red-letter words, and some of the key events in Jesus' life. You're going to have to uh, zero in on them and say, all right, uh, did this healing take place? Why? Did this exorcism take place? Why? Uh, did he die on the cross? Why? Was he buried? Where and why? Was he raised from the dead? Who saw him? And uh, what happened to the early church after the resurrection? All those are specific questions for which we have specific data. So I'd say... Big picture, right genre. Little picture, yeah, we're able to go in there with tweezers and pick out those individual events. I would say those who think that Jesus of Nazareth never existed are well over 100 years out of date. Like, like Bart Ehrman says famously, he says, if Jesus was crucified, he existed. And since we know he was crucified, he obviously existed, and all those who say he didn't exist are just wrong. Historians today regard the existence of Jesus as a done deal. It's indisputable. In fact, professional historians and biblical scholars would view those who would deny the existence of Jesus to be on the same, uh, in the same kind of camp as Holocaust deniers and those who think we never went to the moon. 
See, I told you. But there's an additional perspective that's often missing from discussions of the historical evidence for Jesus' existence. Historians mention Josephus and the Talmud as references, but there's a larger Jewish history to consider. The early Christians, many of whom were Jewish, accused the Jewish leaders of conspiring to hand Jesus over to the Romans for crucifixion. Can you imagine these early Christians pointing a finger at the Jewish leaders for their role in Jesus' execution if the Jewish leaders had no idea what Christians were talking about because Jesus was a mythical figure? Wouldn't we expect the classic Jewish response to Christianity to be something like, what are you Christians talking about? We've never heard of this Jesus. And yet, that's just never been the Jewish response. Here's Dr. Michael Brown on the Jewish perspective. Well, of course he existed. That's, that's really not in dispute. What's interesting is you have ancient Jewish traditions and recorded in the Talmud and what's called Midrashic literature, and they mention someone called Yeshu, and he's, he's mentioned sometimes in a generation or two before when Jesus lived or a generation or two after, and then the memories seem to be vague. So there's dispute about whether the authors of the Talmud actually knew of this Jesus. Did they put him in the wrong place? Is this referring to someone else? But as you go further on in Jewish history, when you get to Moses Maimonides in the 12th century, uh, he just plainly talks about Jesus uh, being given over to be killed and so on and, and why Jews don't follow him. So through Jewish history, there's never really been dispute about his existence. And what's interesting also in the early Jewish literature, for example, second, third century, what's called the Tosefta, you have references to these Jewish sectarians who pray for you in Yeshua's name. And, and they're saying it's better to die than to have them pray for you because they were known for having a gift of healing. Uh, so the movement is there. There's, there's no denial of it. It's an extreme skeptic only that questions whether he actually existed. But maybe Dr. Mike Lacona and Dr. Gary Habermas and Dr. William Lane Craig and Dr. Michael Brown are all biased in favor of Jesus' existence because they're Christians. Maybe they're incapable of being balanced and neutral, unlike the impartial and open-minded internet atheists who spend all their time moaning and wailing about religion on Twitter. Well, let's see what Dr. Bart Ehrman says when a Jesus mither tries to educate him. I know in the, in the crowds you all run around with, it's commonly thought that Jesus did not exist. Let me tell you, once you get outside of your conclave, there's nobody who, I mean, this is not even an issue for scholars of antiquity. It is not an issue for scholars. There is no scholar in any college or university in the Western world who teaches classics, ancient history, New Testament, early Christianity, any related field who doubts that Jesus existed. Don't you just love that condescending tone? I know that in that little wheel of delusion you guys are running on, it's common to deny Jesus' existence. But once you get off that wheel, no one agrees with you. But why, Dr. Ehrman? Why is there a consensus on Jesus' existence? The reason for thinking Jesus exists is because he is abundantly attested in early sources. That's why. And I give the details in my book. Uh, early and independent sources uh, indicate that Je certainly that Jesus existed. One author that we know about knew Jesus' brother and knew Jesus' closest disciple, Peter. He's an eyewitness to both Jesus' closest disciple and his brother. That sounds exactly like what Christian scholars say. But if experts across the board, conservative Christian scholars, liberal Christian scholars, atheist scholars, agnostic scholars, Jewish scholars, if experts across the board agree that Jesus' existence is not in dispute, what should we think of the atheists who tell us that, based on their careful research on YouTube, they've concluded that Jesus never existed? I think that, I think that atheists have done themselves a, mis, a, a disservice by jumping on the bandwagon of mythicism because, frankly, it makes, it makes you look foolish to the outside world. If that's what you're going to believe, you just look foolish. Uh, you, you are much better off going with historical evidence and arguing historically. Someone call the burn unit. 
At the scholarly level, Jesus mythers are as rare as they are angry and biased. But since the internet is home to every insane theory under the sun, you're bound to run into Jesus mythers on various websites and platforms. They're going to challenge you to prove that Jesus existed. And if you accept the challenge, they're going to play skeptic while you present your evidence. I encourage you not to take the bait until you first show them the problem with their methodology. And it's very easy to show them the problem with their methodology. When a Jesus mither sends you a message and says, prove to me that Jesus exists, simply reply, I'd be happy to prove to you that Jesus exists, but I don't want to present my evidence to a person who may not exist. So before I start giving you evidence, first prove to me that you exist. Then sit back and play skeptic. Whatever evidence the person gives for his own existence, just tell him that it's not enough and that you're not convinced. Offer alternative explanations of the evidence he's presenting. Say, maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe I'm on drugs and I don't remember taking them. Maybe I'm the only thing that exists and I've invented you as a character to keep myself entertained. Maybe I'm just a brain in a vat and a mad scientist is sending me signals to make me think that you exist. Maybe I'm in the matrix. Prove to me that I'm not in the matrix. Prove it, prove it, prove it. Once your atheist friend fails miserably, once he realizes that when you adopt his methodology, he can't even convince you of his own existence, perhaps he'll start looking for a better methodology. And once he adopts a better methodology, you'll have no problem convincing him that Jesus existed, because only a complete fool would reject the existence of Jesus of Nazareth.